We're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order, being 6 o'clock, Tuesday, April the 9th. Present at the meeting to my right, our legal counsel, Ben Castillo, <laughs> myself, Carmen Gonzalez, our superintendent, Dr. Mario Salinas, Javier Salinas, Leti Flores, and Louis Alamia. This does constitute a quorum. Prayer and Pledge of Allegiance and Texas flag and the prayer by uh, Javier Salinas. Almighty God, whose loving guidance and care reaches all of us every day, grant us the wisdom to make decisions of the best interest of our community. May we use all our energies and abilities to accomplish good things while we are here on this earth, so that we may, as thy faithful stewards, have eternal life. We ask this in thy holy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. A certification of public notice, Dr. Salinas. I certify that the agenda was posted under the guidelines of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Thank you. Awards and recognitions. Yes, ma'am. The first item, we got uh, Antonio Esteros with the after school programs uh, eSports. Not the Golden Apple Award? Oh. We switched you it? Mean. You switched it? Yeah. So we Good evening, Madam Board President, uh, Carmen Gonzalez, Superintendent Dr. Mario Salinas, Legal Counsel and ECIZ Board Members. My name is Antonio Baisteros and I am the ASP Coordinator for ECIZ. This evening, I am excited to bring to you, to present to you and recognize our elementary eSports champions for 2023-2024. eSports in ECIZ is one of the most popular ASP uh, events as there are 27 out of 31 elementary campuses, seven out of seven middle schools, and five out of five high schools that actually have active competitive esports programs at ECISD. This means that there's a close to about a thousand students that are participating in competitive esports. So tonight, we're going to be presenting the champions for the elementary yellow and orange zone, as well as the champions for the bread in the blue zone. I'm gonna have the students. Tonight I invited uh, Mr. Alfredo Trejo, who's going to provide a little bit of details on what eSports entails and the why we do eSports at ECISD. So I'm gonna pass it over to Mr. Alfredo Trejo from Robert Vela High School, eSports sponsor. Good evening, everyone. So I just wanted to discuss why I believe these sources is important and why it's important for these students. <clears throat> so eSports, or competitive video gaming, is not just a global phenomenon, but a gateway to inclusivity, education, and higher education opportunities for our students. eSports stands out for its unparalleled inclusivity. Students from all learning groups, demographics, and ages can participate, compete, and excel <laughs> together. As a teacher, we know that one way to engage our students is in learning is to meet our students where they are at. We have a large population of students who play some type of competitive video gaming, and our aim is to turn that into an educational opportunity that builds teamwork and confidence in our students. You may not know, but the esports industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. Colleges are currently recruiting high school students around the world to play for their teams. There are in international teams that fly around the world to compete in events. I had a student last year named Donovan Garza who won the state championship tournament and was offered full rides to universities. I have a friend, Paul Ogdi, 
who graduated from Robert Villa High School, who is the marketing director for the esports division at Red Bull. There, these are the opportunities that we want to offer our students, and we are leading the way at ECISD. So for the games that we offer here at ECISD, we have two uh, games. We have Super Smash Bros. and we have Mario Kart. In Super Smash Bros., students have to knock off their opponent from the stage um, using their character's ability in order to win. There are two events for Super Smash Bros. We have uh, one versus one where students compete uh, against each other individually. And we also have another one where they compete as a team, uh, and that one's called Crew Battles, where students play as a team of three. Students score points uh, for their team by besting their opponent in a one, v one versus one match. The first team to get two points uh, wins that round. And in Mario Kart, schools compete as a team of four and need to get the most points out of four races against another team. Points are earned by placing higher in the races. So these are our top students from their zones for elementary. We're going to ask you to wait after the picture because we're going to announce the kids in this conference. change the order a little bit, but let me go ahead and uh, recognize, um, first of all, Super Smash Brothers 1 versus 1, we have the orange and yellow first place from Avila Elementary, Aldo Quintanilla. <laughs> Sponsor, Mr. Alonso Chapa, and representing uh, Avila, we have Ms. Brenda, Assistant Principal Brenda Govey. It's gonna be hard for students to kind of let go of the, uh, of the trophies and raise your hand, but if you can, be careful. Second place, we have from Flores Zapata, Jacob Nava. And sponsor, Virginia Rodriguez, and Dr. Hugo Leal, principal. Third place, we have Eisenhower, Leonardo Molina. And sponsor, Mr. William Robert Williamson and Principal Sylvia Fox. Over on the red and the blue zone, these are the first, second, and third place individual winners, one versus one. We have from Betts Elementary, Maddie Cardenas. Second place, Alejandro Arce. Sponsor, Mr. Benny Lozano. And Principal, Ms. Marla Cavazos. In third place, from Escandón, we have Juan Rojas. <laughs> Sponsor, Roel Garza. And principal, Ms. Rebecca Chazareta. <laughs> and Super Smash Brothers, they, they, it's kind of like a relay. The kids actually play in teams, and they kind of hand off the baton, if you will, but playing games. So from the orange and yellow zone, Super Smash Crew Battle, we have first place team from Avila Elementary. Jaden Contreras representing. 
Attending sponsor in this case is Albert Ibarra. And ASP coordinator, Adriana Flores. Second place group battle team is uh, from Flores Zapata, Ivan Rios. Sponsor, Virginia Rodriguez. And principal, Dr. Hugo Leal. From Eisenhower, third place individual, Dylan Garcia. Robert Williamson, sponsor, and principal, Sylvia Fass. Moving over to the red and blue crew battle team, we have from Betts, team number two, representing Matias, Matthias Molina. And we have um, representing from Esparza, team one, we have Xander Moreno. Sponsor, Michael Hinojosa. Principal, Arnold Pesina. In third place, we have Escandon, team one and team two. They actually took third and fourth place. So we do have Emma Chazareta. Moving over to the Mario Kart, um, this is for the little ones. We wanted to separate the little ones from the upper grade. So there's a Mario Kart team race for K through second. And first place team, Flores Zapata. And we have Chase Duffy representing the team. And sponsor, Virginia Rodriguez and Dr. Hugo Leal. In second place, uh, Mario Kart K through second, we have Eisenhower, team number one. <laughs> Student representing Jaime Serna. <laughs> Mr. Robert Williamson, sponsor, and Principal Sylvia Fass. Third place team, we have Avila Elementary. We have Alexis Puente representing. <laughs> Nancy Alvarez, sponsor, and Ramiro Leal as principal. to the red and the blue, we have JFK team number one representing Lorenzo Reina. <laughs> JFK sponsor, Mr. Miguel Camarillo and Principal Gloria Alonso. <laughs> Second place, we have from Esparza team one, Maya Garza. <laughs> sponsor, Michael Hinojosa and Principal, Mr. Arnold, Arnoldo Pesilla. Third place, we have De La Viña team number one, Malcolm Smith. Sponsor, Ms. Annette Monti, and principal, Estela Lopez. Moving over to the K3, I'm sorry, the third through fifth grade Mario Kart division, we have in the yellow orange zone, the champions, first place team is Eisenhower team two, represented by Alonso Garcia. Sponsor Robert Williamson and Principal Sylvia Faz. Second place team, we have Eric Zapata from Flores Zapata. Sponsor Virginia Rodriguez and Dr. Hugo Leal, Principal. Third place, Eisenhower team one is third place. And of course, we have Orlando Lara representing. Mr. Williamson, sponsor, and Sylvia Fass, principal. The last three teams we're going to announce tonight is in the Mario Kart third through fifth in the blue and the and the uh, in the red zone. We have JFK team number one, <coughs> Kenya Angulo, representing. Sponsor, Mr. Manuel Camarillo, and principal Gloria Alonso. Second place, we have Betts team number one, representing student, Eden Cano. And sponsor, Karina Lozano, principal, Marla Cavazos. The third place team in, in this division is JFK team number two. And we have Nicole Vasquez, representing student. And sponsor, Manuel Camarillo, and principal, Gloria Alonso.
All of these students are going to be invited at the end of the year, May the 11th, in a winner take all Super Smash Mario Kart competition. And it's going to be happening at Robert Vela High School. The unique thing about this is that these champion, individual champions and, and team champions are going to battle it out May the 11th against middle school and high school for bragging rights. That'll be at the Tournament of Champions for eSports. I do have one last recognition, a special recognition. Our ECISD eSports team had an opportunity to be a part of our Region 1 um, Region One Education Center. They have their own division that has <laughs> eSports. They invited teams from several schools, several districts in the Valley, in Region 1, and one of our own got first place overall. <laughs> And we wanted to give them a special recognition because they didn't give trophies, but we said, you know what? It's only right. So earning his trophy tonight in recognition as well, we have Adrian Narvaez from <laughs> JFK, JFK Elementary, Mr. Manuel Camarillo, sponsor, and Principal Gloria Luz. Thank you, ECIZ board. Thank you, parents, for your support. And the kids have a lot of fun on Saturdays. If you see them playing at home, they're practicing probably. <laughs> have a good night. Thank you. Awards and recognitions, is that? Yes, ma'am, we have uh, United Way of South Texas, Golden Apple Award. Uh, Madam President, uh, Dr. Salinas, members of the board, legal counsel, uh, it, it, with, with great honor, we're here tonight uh, to uh, do a presentation for the, on behalf of United <coughs> Way to our school district. Uh, it's hard to, you know, uh, come after the uh, yeah, beautiful awards there. But I'd like to introduce Ms. Kim Davis, who serves on the board of, at the uh, United Way of South Texas, as well as Janet Terrazas, and so I'll hand it over to them. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Kim Davis. I am a pediatric administrator at South Texas Health System Children's, but I'm very excited to be here with you all today as a board member of United Way. So we wanted to spend this time to thank Dr. Or Superintendent Dr. Salinas and the Edinburgh CISD Board for their time and support. We're very honored to be here to recognize Edinburgh CISD as a top five school district. Um, so let's tell you a little bit about the award that you all will be receiving. So the number three Golden <coughs> Apple Award was presented to Edinburgh <coughs> CISD for having secured the third largest pledges compared to 16 districts in Hidalgo and Star Counties. Edinburgh CISD has received this award for over 10 years thanks to Edinburgh CISD employees that contributed over $61,000 in 2023 alone to support local United Way programs. Thank you. Um, my name is Janet. I am the VP of Research Development at United Way. And I just want to uh, say a few reminders of our work and your impact um, when contributing with United Way. 99% of all donations stay here in Hidalgo and Stark County, and approximately 179 
thousand families have been uh, benefited from one of the uh, partner agencies or programs that we have in the community in Hidalgo and Star. Um, we, we serve different types of uh, programs and agencies from birth all the way to end of life care with agencies like Comfort House. So I just wanted to mention that it's not, <coughs> this isn't possible without your support. And I do want to say thank you so much for the opportunity that you give us and what we can bring back to the community as a whole. Um, we also like to acknowledge Mr. Uh, Mr. Barbosa for all the work and, and the coordination you do uh, to help us run the Edinburgh CISD campaign. And uh, we'd like to take a picture with all of you all. Thank you. Enrollment report. Yes, ma'am. We have Elias Lozano. We're making this report. Uh, good afternoon, Madam President, Superintendent, and members of the board. Uh, I'm here to give you the enrollment report, week ending April 5th, 2024. Uh, at the end of the week for the elementary, our elementary numbers ended the week at 17,109 students. Uh, in comparison to the year before, we were at a net gain of 299 students. At the secondary level, we finished the week ending uh, April the 5th at 16,813, compared to the previous year was 17,203 for a difference of 390 students. Overall, we finished the week at 33,922 students, uh, compared to the year before at uh, a difference of 91 students. And that concludes the enrollment report for April 5th. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next item, we got public comments. First, we have Marshall Gonzalez representing the AFT. Good evening, all. My name is Marsha Gonzalez, and I'm the proud president of Edinburgh AFT, local 6583. Part two, how to make ECISD great again. Number one, here's to the three former assistant superintendents that were demoted. Shame on you for listening to the superintendent's directive of throwing your job responsibilities onto the executive area directors, knowing that it was wrong. Your dedication to ECISD is questionable and shows that you are not the team players you pretended to be. If the excuse is that you no longer have the title, then the district needs to take away your high paying salaries and send you on your way. The district can no longer afford to support the salaries of the employees that are overpaid, not properly certified, refuse to put in a full day's work and sleep on the job. Nor can the district continue to follow the unethical decisions made by top level administrators using the excuses that you didn't know or I need my job. The dis number two, the district has fallen under scrutiny with the negative commentary coming out on social media. This is the result of ECISD's lack of leadership, bad decision making, wasteful spending, unjust treatment of employees, and rampant nepotism and compadrismo. How can ECISD attract more students and recruit highly qualified teachers with such a tarnished reputation? 
It's time to get rid of the thugs who undermine their fellow board members and interfere with the direct operations of the district. Number three, teachers are not happy with this year's TIA results. Complaints range from being scored as only proficient, that rock solid teacher category on T-test evaluations, to reduction of points in the domains for not participating in the voluntary supplemental after school program. For those administrators that don't know, teachers receive supplemental pay for after school programs. Therefore, after school programs is considered as supplemental duties and is not part of their regular contract. Kudos to the district level SBDM committee members for taking the time and initiative to reevaluate the district's TIA plan so it can be improved and expanded to include more teachers across the district. By the way, was the district TIA plan resubmitted back in November with the corrected information? Number four, curriculum and instruction is the driving force behind all school districts. It's time to eliminate duplicate and ineffective programs. Teachers have multiple consumables stacked on classroom shelves and in closets. Instructional time is limited. Many of these workbooks are thrown out or given away to the students at the end of the year. Yet, teachers are having to purchase post-its, highlighters, and other office supplies in order to effectively implement the district's curriculum. While inflation has been tough on everyone, name one profession where an employee is asked to purchase the equipment and office supplies needed to perform their job duties. What is wrong with asking parents to get involved with their children's education and purchase basic school supplies? ECISD needs to get those grade level supply lists together and get them out to the community stores before summer begins. Each campus should have basic supplies for students in need. It's easy to forget that our teachers are also parents. How can the district continue to expect teachers to purchase supplies for their own personal <coughs> children and then the children of other parents? Number five, the district needs to eliminate programs that are not cost effective, serve a small population of students, and are draining the district's finances. We don't have the money for after school programs, so eliminate it. Pre-K three is not cost effective. We don't receive full funding for these students and need to purchase pull-ups, wipes, and gloves. Eliminate it. The Collegian High School will cost the district 15 million to construct. What is the cost to lease it for the next 35 years? The Collegian High School is not sustainable. It only serves 350 students out of the 800 students that were expected. And all four high schools already offer advanced placement, dual <coughs> enrollment, concurrent enrollment, and early college courses. This school is draining ECISD funds and was another bad decision where the district got a raw deal. Cancel the partnership before the district goes broke. On another note, is it true that the CTE program is also missing funds? Is it true that some CTE students will not receive their certifications upon graduation because of the neglect of our district's leadership? If so, how do you plan to fix all of this? Who is ultimately responsible? Take action. Make ECISD great again. Elections are just around the corner. Thank you. <coughs> Next, we have Fern McCleary. Is it true that the boy who came out and complained about the coach making the students exercise naked was the one who had been hazing his ten ma uh, teammates inside the showers? Is this true? Is it true that the parents of the boys being hazed complained to the administration and were told by the assistant principal <coughs> to hold off on the police report and that he would conduct an investigation. Where's the investigation? Is it true this has been going on for years? Is it true that there is an investigation into the current head coach, who is also the athletic coordinator that has been working for ECISD for only a few months? Uh, didn't this individual work for McAllen ISD for four to five years prior to being hired by Edinburgh? 
Why is the district not investigating the former head coach, athletic coordinator, who retired in January? Any administrator or coach who witnessed and allowed this to happen should be terminated and charges should be filed immediately on all. Council members, I am here again to discuss something that is unrelated to education and yet it is happening in our school district system. As administrators, you need to explain to all employees that everything they do or say can be made public. That little uh, phone that you hold in your hand or have in your pocket has changed our society. Two ladies cannot get married in a classroom and football players cannot be made to exercise or whatever in the nude, but issues like mothers concerned about their son practicing in the nude takes a lot of time to resolve. No explanation will work, maybe in the past, but not in this day and time. It gives the public a feeling that those in charge have no idea that their job is to build character, not to win games. Oh, as soon as I said that, I could feel and hear someone say, but it does not matter if we do not win. Please do not misunderstand. Winning is always better than losing. But this school system is intended to prepare our children for the real world. The taxpayers of Hidalgo County pay from 45 to 51% of all taxes to educate our children. And yet when they enter college, they like basic skills. Why? This brings me to this school, new school that is under construction. And Mr. <laughs> Superintendent, we will accept your invitation to tour this facility. Is this the new school that only will have 350 students? Is it true this district is paying over $15 million for our half of this building and that ECISD will also be paying a lease for the next 35 years? I'd like to know who invented, come up with that contract. Then what happens or who owns it after the 35 years? I'm very much like the idea of getting back to hands-on training. Where to have a problem uh, is to, in understanding the financing of the project. If this has not been done, I would suggest that an explanation <coughs> be provided on the internet along with the most asked questions, answer them. My question is how is this financing plan more economical than having this on each of the four high school campuses? And what are the objectives? What community relationships have been developed to ensure that students can actually get a job after graduating? Or is there a possibility that we're going to need more taxes? So it's up to you. Why in the world are you spending over $15 million? I don't know what it will cost us to get out of that contract, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper than paying this. The school district could use that money for each one of those children. And it is your job to make sure those children are safe. And that you haven't been doing a good job. I also signed up tonight. I have a question on 7C, explain what it is. 7D, who watches this company? And I understand that the city marshal uh, does this for free. 8E, explain what it is. 8F, explain where you're moving them. And 8G, explain how many other campuses need this that we haven't already done. Y'all are real good at spending money. It's all taxpayers' money. That is the last uh, public comment. Uh, we move to consent agenda. Since there's questions on C and D, I'd like to take each uh, item individually. Item A, approval of the minutes. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, same sign, motion carries. <coughs> A B, discussion and possible action to approve the educational experience affidavit agreement for UTRGB. <coughs> Madam Chair, I would like to have a discussion or pull this item until we further have some uh, action, some explanation as to the monetary involvement. I also have questions on B, 
7B, and they concur with, um, I believe it is uh, on the following pages. And so I would like for, to have possible discussion if appropriate. Yes, can someone cover this agenda item? This um, agreement will do is, is a partnership with UTRGV. It gives us four employees, two full-time licensed uh, psychologists, uh, and they will cover 50000 for each. And then we have a counselor as well, paid by the u university, and as well as a, a social worker. Now, they will be covered. There will be interns. And we all we have to do is commitment of twelve thousand to help offset the six thousand for each of the psychologists. So it's and there will be um, it's a contract for four years, and every year there'd be new interns for the district. So the only cost of the district will be forty eight. Twelve thousand a year for four employees. As it is, we don't have any money, and now we're giving out twelve thousand. We would budget. get the resources of four full time employees for twelve thousand dollars. Oh wow. Uh, that sounds too good to be true. Okay. Um, do we have to provide the facility? They will be. Would you? Good evening, uh, Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Salinas. I have Dr. Nancy Razo here from UTRGV that can answer um, additional questions. Um, so but the questions right now, Ms. Uh, in OSA are going to be to you. Okay. All right. On page 12, uh, responsibility of facility. The facility will furnish the presences, personnel, services, and all other items necessary. Is that us? So we are going to Is have. Is that us? Yes. We are going Thank to have you. a room for them so that they can provide the services for the students. All right. On page 13. And just facility at the campuses that we feel that they, the high need campuses that we're going to be assigning them to. Yes. On page 13, uh, facilities <coughs> shall submit to the to university the name and professional and academic credentials of the person proposed as facility liaison. Who is paying for this facility liaison? UTRGV. On the bottom, I2, for school psychology intern, field-based supervisor. Who's paying for the field? based supervisor. UTRGV. All right. On page 14, F, employ an estimated three SBH, SBMHSP uh, interns. Who's going to pay for them? <coughs> for the interns, uh, UTRGV is going to cover th an, uh, the amount of $50,000 for the um, LSSPs. Mm -hmm. ECISD will cover the additional $6,000 per year for that person. For the counselor, it's going to be 40000 and for the social worker, 40000 but UTRGV covers that. ECISD has no cost for those two additional interns. On page 15, Can I ask a question, Ms. Vela, before you yes, continue? Yes, of course. I know that in all school districts, the interns, you really don't have to pay them anything additional to what they're already getting. Mm -hmm. So Correct. why are we paying extra when we don't have to be paying extra? You mean the six thousand dollars? Yes. Because we're trying to be competitive to make sure that but we. But they're get interns. That's part of their study. I can explain if you allow. Uh, I'll, no, I'm need to her. So the, the reason why is we are looking into what the other districts that were um, enrolled in this grant are doing to make sure that they only have there's eighteen positions open and there's only sixteen interns that are available to to fill those positions. So in other words. If an intern from UTRGV sees a position at McAllen ISD, for example, or PSJA, <laughs> that is giving them that fifty-six thousand dollars versus the fifty, then they might end up, you know, at another campus. So that's, but that's something that the district decides. So we can decide um, to do six thousand. We can decide to do three thousand. We can decide to do no additional amount. Because I know a lot of districts that do have them, but they don't pay the additional amount. Correct. 
yeah, the school psychology interns are a little bit different because of the type of certification that they have. For counselors and for social workers, we never have like additional costs. Okay, Ms. Villa, sorry. All right, on page 14, <clears throat> F, employee and estimated three, S, B, M, H, S, B interns that will be placed into employment in high need <coughs> schools. Who is going to provide employment and who will be paying this employment? So those are going to be the interns that we have been discussing. Um, but instead of three, there's the potential um, capacity for us to hire the four. So it would be two LSSPs, one counselor, one social worker. More money. All right. Yes. Uh, yes. Because it, it would be for the two LSSPs that you are adding the $6,000. That's why we, um, in the um, board agenda, we included the 12000 per year because it's only for the two LSSPs. On page 15, item O, collaborate with project team to provide support for SMBHSP interns to administer surveys with K-12 students to measure project outcomes. Who's going to be in charge of these surveys? Ms. So Hino. the surveys are going to be created by the interns and they are going to be providing those to the students once they provide the, it, yeah, UTRGV is gonna create the, the surveys, right? And the interns mm -hmm. are going to be given those surveys to the students to see if there's any progress in the support services that they're receiving. So like a pre and a post is trying to determine was there growth? Do the students continue to need additional services? On page 16, item D, provide the facility an academic calendar that shall include start and end dates for periods of field experience prior to placement. We are providing the facility, Ms. Hinojosa? Yes, the rooms for them to provide the services for the students. And on page 18, then we have the amounts. Yes. School psychology intern will receive a stipend paid through fac facility. Whose facility? Through UTRGV. The stipend okay. is going to be provided by UTRGV. The 50,000? The 50,000. All right. The school psychology field-based site supervisor, who's paying that? The UTRGV which is the, the stipend that they're gonna get, the 3,000, is UTRGV. The That's counseling right. intern, who's going to be giving the 40,000? UTRGV. Counseling field-based site supervisor, 1,000. UTRGV. Social work intern, 40,000. <coughs> UTRGV. Social okay. work field-based site supervisor. Uh, UTRGV. Now who's going to pay the salary? This is the stipend. They're talking about a stipend. Correct. So what, what UTRGV is going to do is at the beginning of the school year in August, they are going to give the money to ECISD so that we can give that salary to the staff member. So it's going to be given to you in, uh, in whole. So the entire amount is going to be given to ECISD at the beginning. So that way we can give them their monthly paycheck. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, clarify a salary versus a stipend? So the stipend is a one-time stipend. Um, I believe that is at the end of their internship. Are they talking about the intern or the supervisor? The supervisor stipend, correct? Well, either one, because both of all the, the only thing that's different about the stipend is the amount, but the, how the stipend is going to increase their salaries. For the social worker intern, for example? Well, pick whichever you want. Yeah, so like the $40,000, I'm the social worker, I apply for to become an intern. Um, I am going to be paid my salary monthly, but UTRGV has already given ECISD that entire amount so that we can, I guess, distribute the amount to the individual that is going to be hired as an intern. Okay, and where's the whole amount uh, in this contract that we're going to receive? from UTRGV, mm -hmm. it is uh, going to be two LSSP, so that's 50,000 each, 100,000, plus the 40,000 for the counselor and the 40,000 for the social worker, so it's 180,000. Ms. Hinojosa, plus the didn't for, we hire social workers? We did, yes. All we did. right, so why are, why are you coming to us to hire more when we just hired social workers and there was a need to hire counsel, counselors, excuse me, and we didn't. It, it just seems like more and more and more and more. And I understand mental health. I understand it completely. And I understand it also, doctor, from UTRGV. But 
please understand that we're in a budget crunch. And for this to come before us, right before we have our second budget workshop, mm -hmm. this is taxpayers' money. And we have <coughs> hired social workers, full certified, that are at campuses, and you're coming again for $48,000 for a four-year commitment. That, that just, that's not being a good steward, in my opinion, of our money. Thank you so much. With all due respect, if I can have the floor, I would really appreciate it because I can explain. I'm the principal investigator on this grant and can explain the bigger picture of the entire thing and, and hopefully have you see how it's 180,000 on a yearly basis, not just one time. 180, you are getting as a district partnering up with the university and we've already partnered up with 12 other districts from Laredo all the way to Harlingen to be able to provide services, you are receiving 180,000 for four additional individuals to provide mental health services. And the reason you're qualifying as a district is because <laughs> Edinburgh, along with the other districts in the Valley, have been identified as districts who have a shortage of mental health professionals. So UTRGB, having this great relationship with this school district, reached out to this school district to provide this opportunity. And the 180 would be every year, ma'am. Every year for this <coughs> intern that we just talked about. Correct. Oh. <clears throat> so I understand your budget deficits. Believe yes. me, I do. I'm a school psychologist. I truly understand that. But yeah. I'd like to have a, the perspective of the children mm -hmm. in your district mm -hmm. and the mental health needs that we have in this district, along with every other district in the country. Right? I'd like you to think about for that child that is going through trauma, that is going through all kinds of things, and you already have some great services under Ms. Hinojosa. You have some great services <coughs> under the five. UTRGB reached out to you all to partner Again. so that our interns are able to come and learn from the experts that you already have within your district. Doctor, where is your guarantee as a representative of UTRGV? For those $180,000. Ma'am, the money is already in the bank. I can assure Our you. Our bank or your my bank? bank? Oh, well, not my but bank. that's a long line between UTR, your bank and my UTR bank. UTRGV's bank, ma'am. Our <coughs> grant year started in January. So the, the, the US, these are U.S. Department of Education grants. If you Google them, President mm -hmm. Biden has provided a whole lot of funding out. It's called the Mental Health Service Professional Demonstration Grant. They actually have another call right now. <coughs> Those funds have already been transferred through G5 into the UTRGB account. What Ms. Hinojosa was explaining to you all is that um, UTRGB will pay the district who's already a vendor under UTRGB, and we've already discussed this with your business office. They will bill us a quoted invoice at the beginning of the year, and 30 days after they do that, all of the funds, the, the we we'll work by semester, so it won't be 180,000, right? It'll be by semester. Those funds will be billed by semester to UTRGB. UTRGB will then send them to your bank account so they're available to pay our interns and as a stipend to your supervisor. The money is already there. Yeah, that makes good. Uh, how are the uh, social workers and our counselors, that we have lots of them, how will they be working together with this uh, initiative? So um, the, the reason we decided to do all three disciplines, that was my idea at the university. Uh, fortunately, I have great colleagues at the university in the counseling department and social work department, and that's actually a unique aspect of our grant. We were awarded, just so you all know, uh, three different grants out of this project. <laughs> so we have $17 million at the university that we're working with for the 12 districts that we're currently working with. You all are joining that that dip, you know that uh, group. Um, we're asking you if you'd like to join that group, right, to be able to provide those services. Now, school psychology interns traditionally have been paid, and the reason we did we did it this way for internship is because social workers and and counselors, as Ms. Hinojosa mentioned, never get paid for internship, but a lot of them do have to quit their jobs because they want to finish and be mental health professionals in schools. And so we, re we did the research in this area, and we want to be able to support these students in providing some funds available, and those interns cost you nothing. We provide the stipends to be able to hire them through your district, right? 
So they are considered full-time employees, but the school psychology interns will be a posted position since they are an FTE. Um, the recommended salary for the school psychology interns is 56,000, that's a general number. After us doing a needs assessment across the valley, that's the general number we came up with, but I'm gonna be honest in what Ms. Hinojosa was saying, to, you know, to go from the 50 to the 56, which is absolutely your decision, but we want you to be competitive. There are some districts paying up to 70, right? So we're wanting you to be competitive across the board to which interns you're gonna get to pick because there is a limited <coughs> number. There are positions open you know, across the valley as we speak now, but those are considered full-time employees. They're, they're, the position would be posted as soon as you all agree to it, if you agree to it, the position would be posted through your HR department to hire those two school psychology interns. Now the supervisors are already your employees. You already have great staff, right, out of Ms. Hinojosa's office, like I said, so she would be the one to pick the supervisor. <coughs> now we, we also have five school psychologists in the district already, and so they would be the ones in charge of the school psychology interns. So and those they, are all picked in-house. And they and would be the ones getting the stipend from the branch? They would get an additional stipend for their supervision services, which is also unheard of. Any counselor, any social worker, any school psychologist you ask in your district that has supervised in the past, whether they've gotten any kind of recognition for it, the answer would likely be no. <laughs> so we've also recognized that, the hard work of these supervisors, and that's why we've included the stipend for them. I have a question, Mr. Nosa, I know that you know, you know the help you give kids is a help, right? Yes. But who's going to manage that money? Because Adele's department has to manage that money coming in. Who's going to be taking, keeping track of their absences when they're absent? So, is there any indirect costs that UTRGV will kick in to help manage those accounts? Because <coughs> it's not just here's your money; you got to manage it too, because you got to make sure they come to work. When they're absent, somebody's got to mark them absent. Somebody's got to deduct them when they have their days. If they stop showing up for whatever reason, but so will UTRGB be willing to pay those indirect costs that are going to be costing her department to manage all that extra money? So there's 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 no additional indirect um, funding that is going to be provided. Um, but as far as monitoring to make sure that the services that they're supposed to be providing and that the staff is in attendance, I'm not working about the services. You said the financial the part. Yeah. The, the back end that it's so fun to say we can do this, but when it comes to her department, it's a different it's a different department. So now all her staff has to start managing to make sure things are being, I mean, people are reporting, they're being absent, somebody's got to mark them absent, somebody has to do that deduction, somebody has to do all those things on her end. So with reference to that, the school psychology interns are the only ones that are your full-time employees. For the counseling and the social work intern, they're, they're trying to finish their hours for licensure. So generally in the other 12 districts that we're working with, the site supervisors that are getting the stipend are the ones that are keeping track of their time. If HR is keeping track of any time per se, um, it's kind of um, not necessary. On the grant purposes, they're still getting their stipend um, because the supervisors are the ones that are gonna be responsible for completing their weekly logs and things like that that UTRGB then has to turn around and that student will be sending them to, to our licensing agents. And I understand that part. I'd say the FTEs that are going to be employees here, you know, they now that they're employees, they got to get benefits and everything else, TRS eligible, everything. Wow. Somebody's got to manage all that and it's not going to be you all, it's going to be her. So somehow you need to look at that amount of time it's going to cost her and her department to get that done. Sorry, Dr. Alamia. Ms. Gonzalez, may? May Go I speak? Um, I have a statement, no, no, not so much of questioning. Um, I'm a very big advocate in improving our mental health, especially since the COVID hit us back in 2020. A lot of our kids that are now teenagers in our middle school and our high school have been affected mentally. And uh, personally, one of a good friend of mine's uh, child almost took their lives. So it's hitting me a little differently. Um, I'm a, like I said earlier, I'm a big advocate for our mental, improving our mental health. I feel that we are a little bit behind in improving our mental health capacity for our students, especially after the four or five years that we've uh, endured uh, living with COVID. We no longer have that, but it, mental, our mental health capacity in our, in our students is still there, and we have to do something better to, to address it. Uh, I wasn't present at the last budget workshop, but 
Uh, one thing I do want to address is that we need to find the right funds to put in for our mental health awareness program because every school should have at least one advocate or at least one professional to help some of our kids that are going through certain changes in their lives. I have a six-year-old who's going through a change just from pre-K to, to kinder, from kinder to first, so I understand that it's very uh, possible for us to, to open up the budget and see what we have to help improve the needs of our students here in the school district, not, not just in the high school, but also in the middle school and elementary. Um, we definitely need to devise a plan, a better plan in our budget for this coming 24, 25 school year. So that way all of our kids are, have the necessities of going to one of our licensed professional counselors or uh, uh, social workers to help get the help that they need because this isn't going away. Uh, I'm in the healthcare field. I see it every single day in our, in our hospital. I see, numerous amount of patients that want to take their lives uh, that do need people that, that they need to outreach so I will be a very big advocate first and I will uh, make sure that we try to get open up some budget uh, open up the budget to uh, get the funds that we need to start our mental health uh, awareness program here in ECISD. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you for that and, and just so you know uh, the reason that we are looking into this grant that UTRGV has is our district has a very big enrollment, right? And we're blessed to have the high enrollment that we have, but the needs are also very high. And every single day we get crisis calls from elementary, middle, and high school um, campuses where the students are needing that additional support, but we don't, we have staff, but it's not enough, I feel, to meet the needs that, that we, have at this point. Yeah. There's just so much need and it's very difficult when you have 20, 30 different calls on a different, um, on any given day. And staff that are addressing maybe 600, 700 students as their caseload. Across the country, the ratios, the recommended ratios for mental health professionals, for, for every one school psychologist that you have in your district, they should be, for every, I'm sorry, for every 500 students that you have in your district, should be one school psychologist, and I do have those ratios available if you need them. So 500 students for every one school psychologist. You have five in the district and you have 33,000 students. For every um, 250 students, one counselor, right? And again, we do have those ratios. For every 250 students in your district, one social worker. And I understand you've said you have um, employed some, and we applaud you for that at the university because like Mr. Alamia said, the mental health needs of our, our country are great, let alone our students, right? Our students need to see that support. So those are the recommended ratios that we had to report to the U.S. Department of Education so that they could give approval for us to even propose this to Edinburgh. We had to do that for every single district, and they looked at the ratios and saw that we are not meeting them here in Edinburgh. And we also, you know, which is why, again, we're proposing um, this grant partnership with UTRGV and believe me when I say that we are totally in support and recognize the need for health services. We just want to make sure that we understand the monetary commitment that we're making. We have already made a great commitment to having counselors. I think you will, if you know our district, we have lots of counselors that cost us big, big bucks. And then we added social workers. And then this year, we added some more. All we want to be sure that this is a grant that's going to add to what we have, to improve what we do have. Uh, we just want to be sure that we make it. That's why we, we, we ask questions because we, we need to know before we say yes to a grant because there's nothing free in, in this world today. And, and you're absolutely right. Um, your member there that, that pointed out it sounds too good to be true. Trust me, yeah. when we applied yes, it for is. it, it definitely sounded like too good to be true. And then when we applied for it again and again for the you know second and third times, it was definitely <coughs> something that was sounding like too good to be true. But we also had our congressman, you know, that got involved in letting the people in Washington know um, what the needs of the valleys are. And I'm very proud to say that that happened. Right, the intervention um, congressman Cuellar out of Laredo I'm was involved nervous. in the finance committee to make some of those determinations. Right, of where the grants were going to go. Obviously, we did all the legwork, right? We wrote it all up, we put it on the table, but I know he was highly involved mm -hmm. in that, and all of our congressmen here in the Valley and the representatives 
Uh, we reached out for letters of support when writing these grants because again, we all know that the Valley is underserved in many areas. And so just the fact that we were <coughs> within $17 million should tell all of us something. So one more question. These positions that you say, Ms. Hinojosa, will be posted for you, doctor, once yes. we approve this, again, these positions are going to be paid under the grant and UTRGV. That is correct. But they are still going to have all the services as what <laughs> Mr. Uh, Salinas has stated, correct? Only the LSSPs, counselors and social workers do not qualify for any of that. They so, get the stipend yes. from When UTRGV. this grant ends, because they're gonna be hired under a grant. So when this grant ends, those positions will also end or correct. will you be asking us to absorb? No, it will end because these are interns. So every year you're gonna get new staff members because the internship is going to end at the end of that year. So it's going to be revolving. Year one, you're gonna have certain staff members, year two, a different uh, staff. At the end of the four years, it's the end of the grant. So it is the end of the partnership with UTRGV in this, in this predicament. All right, have you, have you identified? Well, I'm sorry. Um, we have already gone through our first uh, round of an annual report and gotten some great feedback on the fact that we're doing great work with all of our districts. Many other universities, so again, to paint a picture to you, right? Many of the other universities across the country partnered with one school district. We didn't have the heart to do that. And I, I get teary-eyed because I'm with Mr. Alamia. I, I do suicide prevention trainings. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for 10 to 35 year olds. Yep. It's, it's horrible, right? So we couldn't see us just partnering with one district when the needs are great here in the Valley. Yeah. So that is another layer to just add to this, right? Um, another layer to add to this to this situation. Have you uh, already identified the schools that are in need? So we are going, we have not identified them. I am going to be meeting with Ms. Suarez, um, the Director of Special Education, because the LSSPs are under special education so that we can coordinate. And then looking at the caseload for the campuses. Where is it that we are having the higher need and the constant um, crisis calls? And that's where these individuals are going to be placed. Well, so, Sophia, you know the need. Yes, I do. Also to clarify that the school psychology interns are going to be under special education supervision because that's where the school psychology, I mean, the school psychologists are, but they're not just going to be providing special education services. Correct. So I wanted to make that clear because sometimes that gets very all right, one last question. Um, what, you said there were other districts participating. Who yes. are they, please? Um, we have Laredo, <coughs> United ISD. We have, I'm going down the valley. We have Harlingen, PSJ, McAllen, Mission, Sherryland, <coughs> Ed Couch Elsa, um, uh, Mercedes. Great. All those are in need? Wow. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, same sign, motion carries. <clears throat> I don't see it. Okay. Okay. Uh, item C, can we give a little explanation uh, to that? Let's <coughs> hear from maintenance. Item C are uh, this, it's, it's called LVT, it's luxury vinyl tile, and we use this in the portables mainly. Oh. And the reason is that uh, regular composition tile, the 12 by 12 squares, we don't use them on the portables because those you need a wax, you need a mop daily. And uh, the LVT is a damp, they mop it with a damp <coughs> because we have issues with wetting the floors in the portable. That's the reason why we ordered the LVT. And this is for all those portables we're trying to upgrade, right? Right, yeah, we use them every time we upgrade a portable. Or if they have issues at an old portable that the tiles are falling and causing a trip hazard, we go ahead and replace those. Okay, thank you. So okay. move. Second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those in favor, same sign, motion carries. 
Item D, approval of competitive sale bid proposal uh, 2346, the fire extinguishers ins inspection. Any read, uh, a little explanation of why we don't use the uh, fire marshal? Fire marshal? No, these are uh, companies that are licensed to do this. A local fire marshal doesn't <coughs> do inspections of every <coughs> fire extinguisher. Okay. These companies recharge them or tell us that you know they're not anyone. rechargeable and we have to replace them. So that's an annual inspection that's required. By it's a different team. inspection that, yes. that mm -hmm. requires. Okay. So move. Second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All those in favor, same side. Motion carries. And this concludes uh, the consent agenda. We move into the action agenda. Approval of the second reading revision to board policy at DEC local. So move. Second. Any questions? Mm -hmm. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <coughs> this does make this uh, second reading official. Let's make sure there's very important and different information here. Let's make sure <coughs> they get through the teachers. Yes. Having a good policy with no knowledge to the to the people that are going to be affected by it is important. There's a lot of changes here. <coughs> Madam Board President, uh, the, 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 the public already had an opportunity to speak to the board. Uh, as far as uh, kind of acknowledging the board, you may if you'd like, but you're not required to. We'll give you a copy of it. Uh, okay. Thank you. Oh, do you want to take a vote? So move. Oh, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I haven't acknowledged the presence of Mike Farias. I'm sorry. Item B, Memorandum of Understanding regarding the... So Edel move. Second. Se All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item C, approval of the 2024 uh, special, yeah. specialized... Madam Chair, programs. I would like to pull this item at this time um, so, so that we can review it more in depth during our second uh, or following budget workshop as, as so that we can look at it more. I second it. More in depth, yeah. Dr. Salinas, mm -hmm. if we may. Yes. Okay, one, uh, one of the concerns that, that we have at, at this immediate uh, looking at the cost, even though y'all did a good job of going from three million to two million, but because we have absolutely no idea what kind of money we do have, for the regular program, we want to be sure that we can accommodate the two million for the summer program. Now, there's at least two programs here that are required, so those have to be approved because we have to find the money somewhere. But maybe, um, and I don't know when our next budget workshop is going to be. Do you know? Oh, okay, good. Yeah, good. Schedule that gives us enough time. But I, yes. I, oh, okay. I will add that the money the for this summer is our current tomorrow. budget. Okay. It wouldn't be for our next fiscal year budget. Yes, yes, I know okay. that. Okay. But since we don't know what the Two. future is, mm -hmm. and we know that we have this money that we may need in case we don't get what we are going to need in order to operate the whole year next year. Understood. Okay, that, yes. that's where we're coming from. Okay. It's, we, it's, we will add it to the agenda item. Yes, for, yes. Yeah, and, 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 and my concern is with curriculum instruction department and as far as the days and how we've uh, given some to the elementary, the middle, and the high school. So I have some questions about that and pending some um, star scores, Mr. Garza, so that we can look at that. So I'd like to pull this item at this time. So move. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, same side. This uh, item is pulled. Uh, item D, uh, approval of competitive sale bid. Uh, so move. Second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, same side. We will have fruit for two, two each. Uh, e, approval of competitive sale bid uh, vinyl composition title. So move. Title. 
All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, same sign, motion carries. Item four, competitive sale proposal 2322, moving portable buildings. So move. Second. Second. Uh, question, um, is this uh, in need? As needed. As needed. Last year we budgeted basically the same amount and only only spent spend 30. Yeah, we hardly need so, any portable. So, yeah, we hardly, if only if needed we have enough money to. And we don't anticipate moving too many as well okay. this year. All right. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. <coughs> All those opposed, same side, motion carries. <coughs> Item G, approved a request for proposal 2394, commis commissioning for various campus heat and air condition improvements. Motion Funded. with a question. Mm -hmm. Second with a question. Third with a question. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. Just for clarification, Mr. Gomez, if you can, uh, for the record, address the, the schools that are in needs of these improvements, please. Uh, there's, the schools for these are, I mean, I need to grab my book. Okay. Okay. They're there. They're here. Uh, Robert Vela, Parientes, and Edinburgh North. And uh, these, are, uh, these are the three of the 14 uh, campuses that we did the ESR projects for. And these are the last uh, schools that we will need to contract commissioning services for. Under ESSER. These are all ESSER related projects. That, that was Bella Barrientes and who? And Ed, Edinburgh North, ma'am. And these projects will be, um, are, they, are, are they ongoing right now? They're uh -huh. complete. They should be the new completion of the, uh, by us. And this is for balancing and testing? Uh, this one is actually commissioning, which is the controls. Uh, we have controls in our office that our uh, maintenance staff uh, will test the airflows uh, in the uh, systems to make sure it's comfortable. Uh, testing and balancing is more of the airflows at the equipment that a different vendor does. Right. And you're giving the award to whom? We have uh, Terracon and uh, Ethos. Those are two vendors that uh, that have been uh, helping us with the commissioning services. Uh, these are vendors that have done jobs for us? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we went out for uh, uh, proposals for the vendors uh, several months back, and those were the vendors that submitted, and uh, we brought them board to help assist us with the commissioning services. They're not the ones working in the gym? Uh, no, no, those aren't there. No. Mr. Gomez, I would like to, like to just ask that, that as you move on with big HVAC projects, you know, I know that we do see them at risk for bids, and but also consider design build to see who does it faster, more efficient, a better quality of work. Yes, sir, uh, typically, that's, that's something we can look at. Uh, I know the reason the district <coughs> decided to take on the commissioning and test and balancing, balancing is uh, so the district can have more oversight on the uh, results of checking the systems, which uh, um, it turns out to be uh, a good idea because uh, we're finding that there's more that needs to be done from the vendor or the contractor to make sure the system is work working properly and that's what's uh, that's the benefit of taking on these uh, uh, the district taking on these uh, vendors any particular reason why north is much higher than the other two um, uh, typ typically it comes down to the uh, to the scope of work uh, North is uh, does have a significant. It, it is a high school. Uh, it has uh, uh, more work involved than Bella. Bella is just replacing units. Parientes is a whole new uh, uh, system install, but its middle school is not as as large as uh, as both of the high school. But Edinburgh North has uh, more equipment that's being replaced, and it does have um, some chiller lines and uh, uh, pumps. And so there's more work involved in uh, in North. Edinburgh North. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Gomez, yes, ma'am. So once we approve this, are we done with all the heating and air? Um, once we're done with, with this, we will need just one more uh, vendor for the test and balancing, and, and that's it. One more campus, I'm sorry. One more campus. Yes, ma'am. So did, did we approve something the last board meeting on, on this? Do you remember uh, uh, Yes, we approved some, uh, on the la in the last board meeting, we approved uh, some commissioning services. And uh, we did have that one comment on uh, keeping it as a fixed fee, set fee, yes. and that's something that we addressed with the vendors this time around. All right, thank you so much. Okay, we have left this other portables. Say that again, sir. 
what we have left is all the portables. Yes, yes, that's correct. Okay. All right. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <coughs> Item H, approval of competitive civil proposal 2438. Uh, so moved. Arrientes, Abestos. Okay. All those. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. This concludes the. Um, Action agenda. Move. Motion. So move. Go, motion. Go to set. Close. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seven thirteen. We are in executive session. That's what I did.
Motion, 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 come back. Second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, same side. For the record, no action was taken in executive session. Madam Chair, I want to, since this is still a live meeting, I'd like to bring back the item that was pulled by Ms. Dominga Vela. What item is that? Item, it is item 8C. I'll run back item 8C to the live meeting. Second. I second. Yes, now, Madam Chair, on item 8C, I'd like to move for approval all the summer school staffing component of that item and to bring back to the table the curriculum writers once we go through the workshop to see what we want to continue with as far as summer school curriculum writing programs. So this would include the hires for summer school, the pre-K kinder, and the ADSY to allow us um, to start prior to the uh, fourth Monday of August. Yes, ma'am. I am in agreement also with that. Okay. Move for approval. Including bilingual. Including the bilingual, all summer school staff, yes, or any department. Motion for approval. Second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. I think this meeting is adjourned. I need a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. That we accept Dr. Salinas. Are we going to go oh, through your staff? staff. <laughs> your staff. Uh, section 55, section C, section 551.074, personal matters. Uh, recommend the appointment of the professional applicant. To the so moved. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Is that what that's it. Okay, I need a, a motion to adjourn. So I make move. a motion. Second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 820. It's 820. It is 820. This minute is adjourned. Thank you.